Many have viewed our prophetic warning to the Philippines already. Some come back with questions, and others with challenges, and others, well, with other responses, let's say. However, for those genuinely seeking the truth on this matter, we are creating this video to go even deeper into this topic for complete understanding, and wow, we have uncovered a pattern that is going to blow your mind. See, though, we did use a clip from a modern prophet in the last video. We are not and have never referred to ourselves as such. We are researchers. We prove. And this is where our research leads, the restoration of prophecy. The Philippines is Ophir, Sheba, and Tarshish, and we prove that. And that's wonderful news to many. Know that there is responsibility that comes with that revelation. If you have not viewed Solomon's Gold series, we realize you are likely in the dark on this issue. But don't comment. Go watch the series and test it and see if we prove our position. See, we know we do, and that's why we say this all the time. We give this challenge, because no one has been able to disprove it in over three years now. So, in meditating on scriptures of this topic, we were struck with a thought. We connect one earthquake in southern Mindanao to a rebuke of All Saints Day but is it possible the other earthquakes that have occurred there have meaning as well? Oh boy, when we go this route, it is amazing many times what gets uncovered. Also, this is a one-of-a-kind, rare occurrence in the past month, as there were four 6.0 earthquakes which are not from the same source occurring. These are different earthquake events. Some dismiss this as, well, earthquakes happen and all over the world. Yes, they do. But not this, and not in Mindanao. Not according to the data nor the history. This is the first time in recorded history we can find that four 6.0s or greater occurred in Mindanao, and we are not the only ones to realize it. On our Facebook, we put up a link to an ANC newscast where a scientist says exactly the same thing. No, he doesn't realize the prophetic significance, but he's saying the same thing. We cannot use that clip here even though we legally can, actually, but ABS-CBN has already tried to take down other videos over that. Oh well. However, here's a well-written article which says the same. This is a unique event, and yes, it is time to wake up and realize there is much more to this. By the end of this video, you will have the evidence as to why this is happening. You will realize this is not something that can be marginalized and swept under the carpet. No, this is real, folks. See what you think. Okay, enough shaking. The Philippine Daily Inquirer had a great article the other day, which one of our viewers sent in. Zoida Yamba sent this in to us. Thank you, Zoida. It's titled... What's baffling about recent Mindanao quakes? Interesting already. This is written by UP professor and director of UP NIGS, Mario Aurelio. Now, we are not going to read the whole thing, but we encourage all to read it, and there will be a link in the description box below. The series of earthquakes that struck Mindanao between October 16 and 31, with magnitudes 6 or greater, 
should baffle laymen and scientists alike because several characteristics of the seismic events remain poorly understood indeed. For instance, why is it that the four largest events are of the same order of magnitude within the range of six? During an earthquake, theory dictates that aftershocks that follow the main shock should be of lower magnitude, so they should be less than a 6.0. Yet they weren't. Four times they weren't. What does this mean? In particular, following the logarithmic behavior of earthquake occurrence explained in the age-old Gutenberg-Richter law, it is expected that there would be fewer higher magnitude aftershocks then there will be lower magnitudes. Further, there would be expected one first level aftershock, 10 second level aftershocks, 100 third level aftershocks, and so on. In other words, they should be decreasing in magnitude all along, less and less and less. The October earthquakes included a magnitude 6.3 on October 16, 6.1 and 6.6 .6 on October 29, and a 6.5 on October 31st. Yes, All Saints Day was the next day. Imagine that. If not aftershocks, what then could these earthquakes be? See, honest scientists like this one realize that there is something unique about this event recently. Well, they may not be able to explain it, and they may not understand it, but it was not normal. And no, it most certainly does not occur all the time. In fact, it has never occurred, not like this, in Mindanao's entire history, at least recorded history. As he says here and lays out the theory in great detail, Read the article. He is very eloquent, no doubt. When a large earthquake occurs, the pressure then transfers. The following earthquakes become smaller and smaller and smaller. But this is not what happened here. We literally, scientifically speaking, have four unique events that though they may be related in a sense, they are not the same earthquake event but four different events. So those saying, ah, uh, we always get earthquakes, well, you will know by the end of this video that it's just plain not the case. Not if you follow the data, not if you read what the scientists are saying, and not at all. Because we will now cover the major earthquakes which have hit southern Mindanao since 1897. And there is no other event this large on record for one. Yes, one larger earthquake that has occurred, but not four over 6.0 ever recorded in history within a cluster like this. No, hasn't happened. However, what interests us even more is the overwhelming prophetic pattern that we have now uncovered that shows up not in just this one series of quakes, which we covered in the last video over the past month, but in most of these events in all of recorded history. And it's linked to the feasts of Yahuwah and pagan holidays. This, my friends, is going to blow your mind. In fact, in 1897, a couple of years before the coming Philippine-American War, in fact, which is likely no coincidence either, but we're not going to cover that here, there was a 7.0 earthquake on September 20th, 21st, as it continued. But the largest was 7.0. Again, this was not like the four 6.0s we just saw. Not at all. And note, there were not two 7.0s, not three, just one. Especially not 
four of them. Here's what's fascinating about this, though. This is one week. According to the Hebrew calendar in 1897, one week before the Feast of Trumpets, or Yom Teruah. Or as the rabbis misname it, Rosh Hashanah. Yeah, that phrase meaning New Year is never once associated with this day in all of Scripture. It's used in Scripture to refer to Nisan 1, which is in March, basically, and not ever in September. There's only one new year in the Hebrew calendar, not two, and that's nonsense. This came from Babylon, not from the Bible. But wait, why would Yahuwah be shaking the earth a week before the Feast of Trumpets? Well, what did Messiah say when the adults told him to quiet the worshiping children? He said, if we do not worship him, the rocks will cry out. Don't believe the Bible mentions earthquakes caused by Yahuwah? By the way, keep watching because we'll show you many scriptures at the end of this video which say he most certainly does. Let's observe the pattern though before drawing a conclusion here. And we'll discuss this further. An 8.0 struck South Mindanao, April 14, 1924. Oh, wow. That just so happens to be the day Messiah was entering Jerusalem on the donkey just before his crucifixion. See, the Passover lamb is selected on that day, and he was our Passover lamb. So an earthquake right on the very start of the Passover season. Huh? What does that have to do with anything? Notice the pattern. 1897, one week before the Feast of Trumpets. And not another earthquake of serious magnitude until 20 seven or so years later. And now, right at the beginning of Passover. Wow. But there's more to this. The next great earthquake, and notice the time difference on these, that has changed now in South Mindanao. Great earthquakes are increasing exponentially, and there's no debating that. We'll show you the data and you'll see for yourself. So here's an 8.0 in 1976 off the Moro Gulf. And this one did a lot of damage as it generated a large tsunami as well. Estimates are all over the place, but some say as much as 8,000 were killed. Now notice what that area represents. This is Muslim territory of Mindanao. And then looking at the news of that day, just following this event, the NPA commander, his number two, and 23 of his leaders were all captured. Coincidence? We think not, especially since this was what Marcos called the final blow to the insurgency. Wow. There's no feast in August, but just a few weeks later would be the fall feast season. But we are not going to connect this one to the feast. We do not need it, because most actually do directly. June 7 and 9, 1999, there were earthquakes, with the largest being 5.1 in Augusan del Sur. Oh, wow, that's another feast day. This is about one week before Shavuot, or Shabua in actual ancient Hebrew, also pronounced Sheba, or Sabu, all the same word. Watch the Feast of Sabu for that. That's the day Messiah was born, not December, and the day of covenant renewal. But why the earthquake? Well, 
here's three out of four great events which precede Shavuot, Passover, and the Feast of Trumpets. These are all, these are three of the seven feast days of Yahuwah in Scripture that we are to keep, according to Scripture, many times over, forever. Now, this is impossible, yet it is so. Anyone looking for proof on Messiah's birth, by the way, we prove that in when was Jesus born, first the year, then we find the month, and then we find the exact day. Check it out. January 1st, 2001, New Year's Day. Again, notice the time span between great earthquakes because that gap is about to be greatly shortened. A 7.5 in Deval. On New Year's Day, January 1st, a couple of weeks after this would be the second Edsa revolution. Was Yahuwah speaking out yet again? Now, it's not around the biblical feasts, but instead this one is on the pagan festival of New Year's. We keep seeing this pattern just as this year, All Saints and All Souls Days, saw significant earthquakes leading up to them, and during, even. March 5th, 2002. Notice we just saw a speeding up of the timeline here, and it does even more. Oh, look at that. This one occurred one week before the actual biblical new year, or the real Rosh Hashanah, Nisan 1. And it's two weeks before Passover. Oddly, we keep seeing history surrounding these as well regarding the Muslim insurgency in the Philippines. It was a few months later, but there were battles going on during this time when the earthquake occurred as well. And the leader of Abu Sayyaf was killed just a few months after this. Then a 6.4 earthquake hits the Moro Gulf again. We're going to see the Moro Gulf many, 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 many times here. Notice how many of these originate there in Muslim territory, very oddly. This one hits right in the middle of the Christmas season. If you do not know, Christmas is not the birthday of Messiah, but of the sun god, his enemy. We encourage you to research it and know your history and Bible, which, by the way, never mentions Christmas, although it does mention the Christmas tree as a pagan tradition in Jeremiah 10. Go check it out. 2007, a 6.4 in Deval on August 20th. Wait, that, once again, it's two weeks before the Feast of Trumpets. The earth groans for his return, which, by the way, is likely on that exact feast day, in fact. However, his people in the Philippines are not keeping his feasts, and the rocks are crying out because we are not. We must restore these feasts and abandon the pagan ways of Yahuwah's enemies. Just days later in history, the Communist Party of the Philippines' founder was arrested in the Netherlands. Coincidence? And the pattern continues. This one occurred right on the second day of Sukkot, also called the Feast of Tabernacles or the Feast of Booths. A 6.6 .6 on the Moro Gulf, yet again, on October 4th, 2009 second day of Sukkot. Great earthquakes are much closer now. So was Messiah not literal when he said they would increase in the end times? And are we not in the end times? Yes, we are. A month after this event in history, we saw the massacre in Maguindanao, where 60 were killed, martial law eventually declared, and eventually the hostages were released. 
coincidence. Now, here's two we cannot connect. But it does not mean there is not a connection, as during this time, many things could have happened, especially in the Muslim Moro Gulf, where these occurred. To bring this on, or maybe these just happened otherwise, but out of all of these, there are only two we cannot connect, and that is very telling. On September 24th, 2016, a 6.3 in Davao, and here we go again for the third time, just one week before the Feast of Trumpets. Groaning. The earth is groaning for his return. Devout, you must restore his feasts and his ways. Yes, to ignore him will bring judgment and consequences indeed. But the beauty is, we can all be in his presence instead, enjoying his peace. During this time, the drug hearings in history were taking place in the Philippines, and a few days after this event is when Bilibid prison riots broke out and major witnesses were killed. Coincidence? What is definitely not coincidence is this is yet another feast day, period. Wow! April 29th, 2017, saw a 6.9 in Davao and Sarangani. Here we go again. This is one week after Passover and in the middle of the counting to Shavuot, in the middle of the spring feast, the day before this saw bombings in Quiapo, as did a week after this event. Coincidence? We do not believe so. December 29th, 2018, last year as of the recording of this video. Right after Christmas and before New Year's, two pagan holidays celebrated since Babylon and rebuked by Jeremiah again. Read Jeremiah chapter 10. A 7.1 earthquake shook and days later in history. We will not render an opinion on this, but Muslims in the autonomous region in Mindanao voted in the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region, and they abolished the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao, as it was. Either way, this was significant, less than one month after. And this brings us to present, 2019, in which October 16th through the 30th saw not one, not two, but four 6.0 or greater earthquakes, which we already learned were not the same earthquake event, but four separate events, really. Did you notice that has not happened before? This is very unique, and our eyes should be wide open now, and we should be sober and vigilant, as Scripture tells us. Not scared, no. Not unless you are one who chooses not to obey him. We noted in the last video, these major earthquakes lead up to All Saints and All Souls Days, which Abraham rebukes as the way of Canaan the evil. Look, if you won't listen to Abraham, why would you listen to us? So, fine. However, Filipinos instinctively, in your DNA, have a calling to honor the Creator, and you know it, many of you, because we've heard from so many who have said so and agree. It's time for you to do so and stop celebrating pagan festivals, which have no value in your life, and restore his feasts, which have great value to him who matters most. In fact, here's what we didn't mention. The Feast of Sukkot, or Tabernacles, or Booths, took place this year 
oh, get these dates, from October 13th to the 20th, right in the middle of these four great earthquakes. The earth is shaking. It's groaning for his return because we are not keeping his feasts. And it is shaking because we are keeping pagan feasts instead that your ancestors most certainly would not have kept. It is only your conquerors who have forced them on your people. But no more. Watch Solomon's Gold series, and you will find we prove this thoroughly, so much so that no one has been able to disprove our findings in three years. This land is very special to him, and that's why it's there in preserved history, in the Bible, and in prophecy. We welcome you to try, however. Some said to us in comments that they would only believe this video if the quakes continued on All Saints Day, because remember we recorded this the day before, and All Souls Day. Oops, they <laughs> did. Three on All Saints Day and one on All Souls Day. And they continued for days even beyond that. These four great earthquakes are definitively a prophetic warning to all of us. Yes, in Davao, but also to the whole Philippines and to the world. Why? Folks, we are in the end times and the lukewarm will soon disappear. Even churches will be forced to either fold into the Catholic Church, go out of business, or restore his ways. And there are a lot of pastors who follow this channel, by the way. And we believe many, especially in the Philippines, will rise up just as Messiah says in Matthew 12, 42. So will we take this seriously? Well, some will not, but we believe many of you will. It's time to press into his presence like never before. It's time to know him in true relationship not just as acquaintances. It's time to care about what he wants and not about what we want, such as celebrating his birthday when we want to instead of when he wants us to, and when the disciples did on Shavuot. Shabua, Sheba, Sabu, the very feast of the Philippines. In the end times, what is it that scripture says will define believers. They will be those who are keeping his commandments. Do you even know his commandments? They include the Sabbath and ultimately his feasts. Have you written them on your heart? We are not here to condemn you, but to minister life to you, because this is not negative, not any of this. This is extremely positive. We are living in the most exciting time to be alive. But choose him and choose life. Restore his ways in your life. Again, we believe devout matters because it is the bloodiest part from which the Philippines and parts of the world will be cleansed. Ground zero for the greatest revival mankind has ever seen. Not a tent meeting, but people pressing into his presence and restoring his kingdom. And this time, there will be no end. And this one will last through to the day of judgment and continue forever. You can be part of the greatest move the Holy Spirit has ever fueled. And we know many of you will. See, earthquakes are certainly sometimes natural occurrences, perhaps. However, the Bible most definitely lays out that Yahuwah uses earthquakes to do His will at times. He did during the flood, in judgment with Sodom and Gomorrah, and the other evil cities. On Mount Sinai, when He brought His presence down, 
In judgment of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, where the earth opened and swallowed those who rebelled against Moses and Yahuwah. In Jericho, to topple the walls leading to the defeat of that city. In judgment of the Philistines trying to attack Israel. On Mount Sinai again with Elijah as well. In Amos, at the crucifixion, the resurrection, on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came. Are you getting this? Anyone saying Yahuwah does not cause earthquakes does not know scripture. To rescue Paul and Silas from prison when they worshipped. And in prophecy, many times. Messiah warned us that earthquakes would increase in Matthew 24, 7. And they are increasing right now. You see the pattern of great earthquakes just in South Mindanao alone. They are on steroids in frequency compared to the rest of recorded history. And then we have Gog of Magog, the chief demon who will attack Israel. will see his forces wiped out by Yahuwah with catastrophes, including a great earthquake. Even in the very end, in Revelation 6 and then Revelation 16, among other places, there will be great earthquakes which will mark those days. And they will be from Yahuwah, who causes all of these. One will be so great that every island will be moved from its place, in fact. So yeah, Yahuwah uses earthquakes at times. And yes, he is a righteous judge, and he must be. Nothing he ever does is evil, nor can it be characterized as such. And if we are in his will and in relationship with him, there is no need for fear. Wow, wow, wow. So in wrapping this up, did you notice there have been 17 major earthquake events in southern Mindanao since 1897? That's right, only 17. It does not happen all the time, nor does it happen often, up until very recently. And four of those 17 earthquake events just happened in the past month. That's almost 25% of all the major earthquakes that have hit the Val area just occurred in the past month. And some wish to define this as an everyday event? Nonsense. Follow the data. Only three of these major earthquakes occurred prior to 1999. Three. Since 1897, in about 100 years, only three. And yet, in the past 20 years, South Bend and now has had 14 of its 17 major earthquakes. This has not been happening since forever, and it is not only ramping up. The past month has seen a pushing of the red button, it seems. Will we pay attention to this? And of those 17 earthquakes, by the data, 12 of the 17, or 70%, of the earthquakes in the past 100 years are linked to the feast days of Yahuwah, or better said, the fact that we are not keeping his feasts as the earth is groaning and the rocks are crying out. Three of the others are linked to pagan holidays. So 15 out of 17 are linked to holidays. How can this be? He is speaking to you, my friends, telling you to restore his feast days in your life. This may not matter to you, and that is fine, but we know many of you know better, and you will apply this. Even the math says, again, 82% of all the major earthquake events occurring in Mindanao have happened in the past 20 years. Hello, this is a wake-up call. May we all deal with this according, again, not to fear, 
but with all boldness and restoration of his ways and his relationship. You know, the one from the Bible, the one that happens every day, and we meditate on him day and night. Even when we work, when we walk down the street, on the jeepney and the trike, everywhere, every time. You live in the land of creation, where the Garden of Eden and his presence is housed. And that matters to him, and you matter to him. So much so that he has prophesied about the Philippines in the Bible many times including Messiah himself. You are precious and a special people and it is time for you to repent of your sin and not keeping his ways. Allow him to restore you and your relationship with him. And then you will rise up. May we all do so. Yah bless.